Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see your faces, and it's nice to have some new voices to sing with us today. I'm always inspired by our mission spotlights. And I don't know if it was a similar story or a totally different story, but we once saw another video about missionary cyclists, and I find that really interesting. Um, it's a fun, fun activity that they can do together to strengthen their relationships with one another, but then they get to see people out and about, and it's so wonderful. And now, of course, is the time that we get to come together to sing. And our first song is going to be in our chorus book. It is Give Me Oil in My Lamp. sound pretty great today. <laughs> it always makes the day so much better when I get up here and sing and I just hear you all sing as well and it just makes you think about one day when we're going to be in heaven and we're all just going to be singing together and praising our God. I can't wait for that day. Our next song is going to be in our hymnal and it is song number 190. You should all know this one, Jesus Loves Me. next song today is also going to be found in the hymnal and it is song number 462 blessed assurance
so beautifully today. And can you hear the walls echoing? They are singing back to us. I just love it. I invite you now to stand with us as we sing our opening song, Tell It to Jesus. Reading 55, verse 22 out of NIV. Cast your cares upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. And I will read another version. <coughs> this is for my family. Serakan la kuatirmu kapara tuhan. Maka ia akan memelihara engkau. Tirak untuk selaman lamanya. You know, one of the advantages of getting older is that everybody looks younger. And so this morning, we have uh, a lot of young people up here, and I have another young lady that um, uh, is part of our family. And Rita, we're glad you're here today, and the time is yours. Thank you. <laughs> you can't go yet. Um, it's such a beautiful thing to see that Ozone's parents made it. We got Rainbow's parents here. We got Michael's parents here. So I think as a church, we should have a prayer for our two couples and their families. Oh, you're brilliant. Yeah. And you're <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so you call them up and I'll have the prayer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Could we please have our two lovely couples and their parents up front and we will say a special prayer for them. You know, I really <clears throat> enjoy having Rita part of our family here. She always has good ideas. And thank you, Rita, for this one. This is, this is a brilliant idea. I'm so glad that we have this family here today. There is, uh, there is um, two marriages that are going to take place in the next uh, few days. And we are so grateful that we have each and every one of them here. Sorry. And we're glad that our old friend, Pastor Peter and Vicki are here. Uh, it's been a while, and of course, this uh, is uh, so nice to have you here, Peter. You just uh, 
this is your home church and just I know you've forgotten that but we think of this as your home church it is so nice to have you here let us pause Heavenly Father Lord I want to thank you again for marriage thank you for giving us the privilege of spending our life together with a special person so today Lord we ask that your Holy Spirit will be with them in their uh, days to come hours to come but more importantly Lord in the weeks and months and the years to come ask that you will guide and direct them keep them in the palm of your hand bless them and encourage them and someday soon Lord may we all be uh, in heaven together we ask for a blessing on each person here and particularly the family in your name amen anyway I'm so blessed and humbled to be speaking today I, I I don't do I don't speak I only come here do a little bit of song service and go hide in the back but about two weeks ago um, Pastor Dar called me and asked me if I could you know speak on one of the Sabbaths and reluctantly I said yes and then he asked me which Sabbath I would like to speak. I'm like, I don't know your schedule. You tell me, you got the schedule. And he told me the first of June. I'm like, sure, you know, because I knew I had about two weeks to figure it out. I left out a major point of that date. That's the date where all the families would be here for the wedding. I'm like, what did I do to myself? <laughs> I should have asked him to you know, ask maybe Rainbow's dad to preach. But anyway, I said yes, and here we are. Um, just before we start, let's just say a word of prayer. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the blessing of the Sabbath. We thank you for the blessing of your word. We thank you for the blessing of your promises, and we thank you because you are Father. We thank you for the gift of salvation. And now, Lord, as we're going to speak a little bit about prayer, come and speak to us individually and interpret this message to everyone on an individual basis. We thank you and praise you. Holy Spirit, fill up all the empty spaces in this church right now, and may we have no distractions. And Lord, teach us something this morning. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, like I said, I'm not a preacher. So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to share with you what I've been learning on my prayer journey. Um, how do we pray? Like, how do we pray? I was asking myself that question and the answer is simple. Jesus gave us a blueprint. You know, when the disciples asked him, teacher, how, how should we pray? He gave us the blueprint, and the blueprint is the Lord's Prayer. I'm hoping we know the Lord's Prayer. Could we recite it together, please? Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Lead us up into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So that is our blueprint. That is, that is our reference point on how to pray. I was silent as you guys were reciting the Lord's Prayer for a reason. You guys said, Our Father, forgive us. I didn't hear anybody say, my father, forgive me, um, you know, give me my daily bread. And the obvious thing to note here is that the Lord's prayer is plural. It involves all of us. And when I was thinking about that and looking at my prayer life, I paused and, you know, compared the two. And I found that sometimes my prayers are filled with a lot of I, I, my, my. And then towards the end, 
maybe I'll throw in one or two people or just generalize, you know. Uh, and let's face it, life is hard. And that's why our prayers are filled with I, I. You got a job problem, you got a car problem, you got a house problem, you got, I'm talking about personal problems. There's so many, and that's because this is the kind of world we're in today. Naturally, when we go in prayer, we find ourselves focusing really on ourselves because we are going through a hard time. And we forget to pray for others for some reason. And this is how I found myself doing it. You know, I would pray about everything else. And then at the end, I'd be like, Lord, be with the sick. With the, be with the people that are traveling. Be with those that have lost loved ones. In Jesus' name, amen. So 95% is about me, and maybe the 5% is about other people. And I was thinking to myself, really? Is this, is this what prayer is all about? We come here on Sabbath, we ask for prayer requests, people put up their hands, and I'm thinking to myself, do I leave that in church, or do I actually labor in prayer for somebody? Is it just those two minutes that we kneel down and pray for that person that really matter, or Am I going to persist in prayer like I persist for myself? Am I going to do that for anybody else? And it's, it, it's been a challenge to me. And I've been intentionally trying to do that. But like I said, it's really hard when you have so much going on in your life. Everybody here has something that's going on. Everybody here has something that needs God's help with, um, but we can't solve it. So when we go down on our knees, it's the natural way to, it's a natural thing to do, pray about our problems. But I want us to go back and look at our scripture reading for a moment. Uh, Psalms 55, 22. I'm reading from the NLT and it says, Give your burdens to the Lord, and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to spill and fall. And I like the version that Michael read, uh, which says to cast. Um, I'll read First Peter 5, verse 7 as well. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about what happens to you. I'll read that again. I love this version. Um, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about what happens to you. So basically, he's there with me. But if he's there with me, why am I struggling? What am I missing? Because the equation doesn't make sense. There is a promise that he's there with me, but every day I'm running to him, most of the times with the same issues, over and over again. I pray about my job today, I'll pray about my job tomorrow, I'll be praying about my job a month from today. Like, what, what am I missing? I looked at the word casting. What does the word cast mean? Any other words you could use? other than cast, throw. Yeah, throw is a good one. Um, I looked it up in the Greek, um, the word cast that they use here is shakala, sorry, shalaka, which means phys um, the physical act of throwing down something, casting aside something, or abandoning something. So when I look at my prayer life, like I said, I'm praying, for example, I'm praying about this job every day, every day. Clearly, I've not cast that problem on God yet. You know, um, if I took this book, you know, say the Lord is sitting in that chair and I'm going to go for prayer, and this is my my work problem. So I walk up to God. I'm like, God, here's my problem. 
And then after the prayer, I pick it up. What I'm doing is literally, I mention it to him and then pick it up and walk right back. And tomorrow, because it's a burden and it's bothering me, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'll carry the same problem, bring it back to him, mention it. And guess what? That day came with another issue. My car broke down. So now I have two. Something else. So now I have two. I drop them there. I pray about them. Humanly, I don't have solutions to them yet. I'm trying to figure it out. But, you know, I mentioned them to him. And instead of casting, I just place it there and then hold it back and go on with my day. So my spirit, like, the prayer... That's why I found that I'm carrying those burdens. You know, you, you carry them to him, but then take them again with you. You're so burdened and so distracted with how life is going with you, which is hard for everybody. And that's why we can't think about anybody else. We can't see it because we're distracted. So what is the solution? Like, why? I, I ask myself, why can't I... Just leave it there. And what I've figured out is the problem is fear. I, I'm not sure how God is going to handle it or I've boxed God. I'm expecting a particular solution to this problem. And if it's not that, then it's not going to be solved. So really, I'm not giving it to him. I'm just let, letting him know and going on with my issues. And that fear holds me back. And what the fear does is it sucks the faith out of me. Because of fear, you got no faith for, for him to solve that particular problem. Um, I'm going to give you an example of what fear can actually do to you. I have a few friends in this church. And all of them know that I can't swim. Greg and Julie have a beautiful pool at their house, if you've been there. And in the summer, every Sabbath, there's a group of us that are in that house, like every Sabbath. Summertime, after lunch, people jump into the pool, and you know, I've been encouraged to get into the water. Mm, I, I did. No, I gave an excuse. I got no swimwear. Julie told me, I got you, girl. Here we go. <laughs> So that couldn't be an excuse anymore. So this one Sabbath, I got in the water and sat at the edge. It was nice. And got a floaty, took two steps down. And Brady and Jordan are like, come on, Rita. We can do this. Come on. They stretched out their hands. But I could not go in, not because I don't. Not because I knew that like, I'm going to drown, but the problem is the fear of the water. It, the problem is not I cannot swim, but I fear water. So guess what? I can't get myself. To, I, I don't have control in water, and that, that is a problem. So that is the reason why I can't swim. I know Christine has said she would pay somebody. She, she would pay to watch somebody teach me how to swim. It's that bad. <laughs> One day I will. One day I will. Um, I have to overcome the fear. So now you have that background story about me fearing water. I also happen to be a proud auntie. I, got, I have a few nieces and nephews. And a few years ago, I had, I had um, a great idea of taking my nieces to the water park. <laughs> they could swim. They are kids, about five, four and five. And I played it all out in my head. We're going to go. I will stay in the pool. They'll go down the slide. They'll have a great day. I'll be the world's best aunt, and we'll go home. So off we went with, with some other friend. We got to the pool and, and to the water park and, you know, got everybody changed. And the older one, Chloe, was off. She was off. She's going down the slide and... You know, I stayed around the water because, what? It's, it's shallow water for me. I'm tall enough. And then Emma came around and looked at me and told me, Auntie, I can't go down the water slide by myself. 
she can. But because there are so many people, she goes, no, you're going to have to come with me. And right there and then, I knew that was it. I'm going to drown. I'm going to die. So I'm trying to talk to Emma. I'm like, Emma, baby, I can't swim. Auntie can't get into the water. I, I don't know how to swim. And she says, nope, nope. You're coming down the, the slide with me. And Trish, my friend, told me, you know what, Rita, it's not a big deal. Take the kid up the, 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 the slide. When you come down, I'll be right at the end to grab her if you're worried about her, and then you're fine. The water is shallow. You're already in the water. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm in the water. It's shallow. Okay. And I, the fear was real. I knew I was going to die. That was the day. So we went up, came down the slide, and as soon as I sat on that thing, I'm like, okay, this is it. So I held him out like this. <laughs> we came down the kids water slide she's four we came down the water slide and when we got to the edge I handed her over to Trish and I just fell in the water and I started flapping <laughs> and I was sure I was drowning I was sure I was dead I'm like this is it there was splashing and splashing and Trish stopped my shoulder and told me Rita stand up <laughs> like come on so I stood up. I was in the water before we went down the slide. I knew how deep this thing was. It was, yeah, just by my hip, and I was embarrassed, and obviously, because there's so many people watching. But yeah, that was, but that's what fear can do to you. Can you record that next time? <laughs> <laughs> I won't do it again. I have to first learn how to swim. <laughs> yeah, so anyway. But that's what fear does to us. It, it cripples us, even when, and sometimes all it takes is the Lord saying, hey, my child, stand up. Like, this is my world. And you know the, pro the water will be, your, the water is the problem. They'll be down here. You will walk. It's not easy to walk in water. But you'll, be still, you'll still be able to walk because the Lord got you, you know? And um, I understand that it's not easy for us. We're humans. It's not easy to give, to let go, you know, because when you're surrendering to God, you take, you're, you're letting him take full control, and that's not easy. And I find encouragement in the, in the mustard seed, you know? We all know that have faith like a mustard seed, who knows how small a mustard seed is or how big it is? <laughs> yeah, a mustard seed is about one to two mil millimeters. So that is what? Ten of those? You would line up ten to make a centimeter? And how, who knows how big a mustard seed tree can grow? It grows up to 30 feet. But it doesn't grow overnight. It takes, the farmers here will tell us, you take time, you, you're going to water it, you're going to... And that is, that is just an example of what our faith could be. It, would for, it could be forever mustard seed, right? We trust God with just the little, 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 little things, you know? Or you trust him with that little mustard seed and watch him nourish, it, nourish that little faith you've put in him into a mustard seed, into a 30-foot tall tree. And that's what I've learned. So back to how does this apply to my prayer life? What I'm learning to do now is to start trusting God. I have a problem, back to an example of my job. This is my problem, Lord. And when I walk over there, I put it down. It's hard to put it down, but I put the problem down and leave it there and walk away. And when the trials of that particular thing keep coming back to my mind, I claim the promise that I cast that problem at your feet, Lord, and I know you got it. It's really hard, but that's, that's what I've been trying to do. And then I take a step back because 
when I was picking it up, I was also trying to find my personal solutions. Not, not listening to his guidance or anything, but I'm trying to solve this problem. I tell him about it and try to solve it. But now, I put it down and trust that he got it. And trust that he's going to water it and, and he's come through. And guess what? I'm encouraged to put the second problem down. And I'm encouraged to put the third problem down. And what that does for my prayer life is that it frees that space. So when I'm going to prayer now, I'm not dwelling on the things that I already told him about, that I already surrendered to him. Now, he brings to mind, oh, so-and-so is sick, so-and-so just lost their mom, and so-and-so told asked me to pray for their son who is not in the church. Now, I get time to pray for everybody else as well, because now I don't have to dwell most of my prayer time on my personal issues. And that's what casting has done for me. And that's how I've overcome fear. I can't say I've overcome it completely. Like I said, it's a growth um, process. But that is how I'm learning to, to cast it to him, to, to just leave it at his feet and not reach out for it again. And one of the tools that I use in my prayer life as well that I've shared with some of my friends is uh, having a little promise book. Because sometimes it's really hard. I know Rachel, Rachel is cheering because <laughs> she's using it. I've had this little book for a few years now. And sometimes you're, going, you go to, you, you're praying and you don't know what to say. You don't know what to say. But I like these books because they have topics and the promises on those topics. And that's the other tool I use, either for myself or whoever else I'm praying for. If it's healing, I claim a promise for healing for that. Because the Lord has given us these promises. And he's fulfilling them. All we need to do is believe. Just with that mustard seed and he, he will flourish the tree and it will grow. I don't know if any of you have that one thing that, you know, you just want to trust him with today. You just want to leave it at his feet and ask him to, you know, this one, I want to take control of it. Start with the smallest of them all, the smallest of them all, and, and see what he's going to do with that. So I want us to take a minute and pray. Think of that one thing that would like to, you know, cast at Jesus' feet for him to take care of. And in that spot, think about something else, somebody else that you'd like to pray for. So when you think about this problem, you're like, Lord, I cast this at your feet. But I also remember that there's so-and-so that needs you, that you're going to intercede with. So let's sing together just one stanza of um, Sweet Hour of Prayer as, we are, as you guys are thinking about what it is that you want to cast at Jesus' feet and what the person you're going to be praying for or something else that you're going to be praying for in that spot. Just one stanza. And it's in 478. I don't have a hymn now. <laughs> Sweet
we'll just take a moment to think to surrender that one thing that has been burning us, or two things, whatever you'd like, at Jesus' feet, and think of somebody else that you could intercede for at that, in that, in that um, gap that you will have in your prayer time. Let's take two minutes. Amen. As the as Rachel and Josiah come up, I want you to remember that the Lord has asked, has promised that you know whatever you ask in faith you will receive and um, and meditate on His word. The key thing here is if it is according to His will. And he's willing to teach us, and he's willing to grow us. So just like that mustard seed, put your faith in him. And I pray that one day we'll be testifying about how the Lord has, you know, has led us in growth, how our faith has grown, and, and how we are growing into trees. We know we're not going to be 30-foot trees in terms of faith today, but with him, on a daily basis, we'll continue to grow. May the Lord bless you.
Heavenly Father, we're so grateful and thankful because you love us. Lord, sometimes we forget. Sometimes we stand in the way of your blessings in our life. This morning, Lord, we're opening our hearts, saying, Father, please come in. Teach us. Remind us what we've forgotten. We thank you for your promises upon each one of our lives. We thank you, Lord, because we are all fearfully and wonderfully made. We thank you because we are made in your image. You have numbered the number, of on, the number on our hair. We are that special to you. Remind us when we forget this, Lord, and give us your grace to help us to surrender to you daily. And give us your grace to be your vessels, to, to, to intercede for others, and to serve you in all that we do. We thank you, Lord, and we pray that you will dismiss us with your blessings now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. <laughs> 